book nerds this is my top 20 of 2013 and I have so many books to show you I just couldn't leave these off my list so the first one I have is Dangerous Girls by Abigail Hayes I don't know if you can really see that but I will put the title below this is about two best friends one of them has died and the other still living is the suspect for killing her. So there's this whole trial um, in one section and then there's um, in another chapter it's the present day so it goes back and forth and I felt myself riveted by this book. Oh my god it was intense, crazy and the ending was kind of predictable but it still blew me away that it still happened. So um really enjoy this one. This is a standalone make sure to check this one out. And then the next book that I don't have and I really want it is Endless by Jessica Sherpington. This is the fourth book in her Embrace series and I felt that there was so much action, so much more story moving. The story was moving and the plot was fascinating. Um, I just love these books. The books just keep getting better and better and I cannot wait for the last one. Oh my god. Um, if you guys don't like Angel Books, I suggest just trying this series out because it's kind of amazing. I really love the characters in this one. So, um, I have a bunch here that I also enjoy. This is The Man Man's Daughter by Megan Shepherd. I loved her writing. This is a retelling of Dr. Moreau's um, the Island of Dr. Moreau, sorry. And I actually haven't read that classic, but this book does it really well. It is disturbing in some points. Um, I thought the mystery surrounding the island and her father was crazy. Um, there is a little bit of um, violence and gore in this one, so if you're a little squeamish, then that's just a warning. But really enjoy this one. One of my favorite reads. And the next one is, this is Splintered by A.G. Howard. This is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland. And since I haven't actually read that story, I know classic, but I haven't read it. It is still woven in to, you know, the classic story, but it is in a different sense that there is a darker tone. And you can see it in the twists and turns in this book. I really enjoyed this one. I pre-ordered the second one. Love her writing. Go get it. It's awesome. Then I read one of my favorites, Not a Drop to Drink by Mindy McGinnis. Surprisingly, this one was really, it was really um, gripping, I want to say. I just kept turning the pages over and over because I wanted to see the end. Um, the character in this one is basically living alone with her mom and the world is where there is little to no drinking water. So she's set in this world and she has to learn how to survive. So I really enjoyed this one. It has a good mother and daughter relationship as well as family and friend friendships. So really like this one. Contemporary that I really enjoy that was published in 2013 is Dare You To by Katie McGarry. Really enjoyed this take. I know it's the most cliche story where it's, um, you know, rich, popular guy and then the wrong kind of tracks kind of girl, but um, I still really enjoyed it. I love Katie's, Katie's writing. It is just so simple and point. So many dramatic, um, you know, scenarios come to play and I cannot wait to read her next one, which I own and I'm so excited. Um, she's also one of my favorite. Um, realistic fiction authors. And another book is The Beautiful and the Cursed by Paige Morgan. Um, this is a take on the gargoyles and I know that's a different kind of genre because it's very limited but um, I used to be such a fan of um, that show, the Disney show, the Gar I think it's called Gargoyles, I don't remember. But um, this is a different take where um, gargles are, are real and there are two sisters in this one and one of them is you know 
known as a plain Jane, but she's not really plain when she moves to England and she meets the caretaker's son. Is the caretaker's son? I don't remember, but um, you know, she eventually starts to like him and she realizes he's different. So this was one of my favorite reads for Paranormal. Um, I know there's like a huge amount of books that are saturated in the market, but I really enjoyed this take, so I cannot wait until the next one, which I already requested. Oh my god. Um, so many books. Also, speaking of paranormal, this is another um, take on, excuse me, vampires. This is The Coldest Girl in Cooldown by Holly Black. I haven't actually read any of Holly's stories before, but I was really surprised as to how much I liked her writing. I only had a little bit of issue with the fact that it kept going back and forth from the past to the present and I was getting confused. Um, this was also a really long book so I had to read it in like two or three sittings, I don't even remember. But um, I really liked her creative take on vampires where everyone is set in, you know, um, cold town. So vampires and some humans that are either sick or elderly, they are sent to these cold towns to be fed on by vampires. And the rest of the world um, can see that because they're all on cameras. So it's like a reality show um, for vampires and the whole entire world is, you know, crazy obsessed about vampires. So I really liked the story. The first, the beginning was already like intense. It was a little violent at times, but really enjoyed it. I believe it's a standalone. I think it is a standalone. Um, so yeah. This is the, this one was I think a game four out of five. Yeah. Speaking of more creepy kind of reads, I'm trying to go through them all. But um, between the devil and the deep blue sea by April Genevieve Tuchok. Tuchok. Um, this is I just want to say this the the line the tagline. Um, basically, if you're in love with a devil. Um, you stop fearing the devil when you're holding his hand. So she, um, this new girl comes into this small town and she realizes that the new boy that she likes is not what he seems and he's might be the devil himself reincarnated and um, a lot of weird things start happening in her town after he comes in so she realizes it's probably him. I like this take. Um, the romance was a little too much for me but I still enjoy the creepy creepy um, scenes that transpired my head after this one. Also one of my favorite covers of 2013. This is In the After by Demetria, Demetria Lunetta. This is an angel, angel sorry, alien take on post-apocalyptic. Um, I really enjoyed the beginning part of this book. After that it kind of went in another way where I didn't expect because it's not what it seems so um, I'm still enjoyed and enthralled in this one. Um, I really like these type of stories but if you don't like it as much then um, I suggest you know taking a whole span of time to just to read it all because it can consume you. <laughs> this I just like the chasing part of these stories it's crazy and how they survive speaking of another alien book um, this was getting a lot of buzz and I was kind of hesitant but this is the fifth way by Rick Yancey haven't actually read any of his books before so I was going in blind and I had no idea why everyone was like freaked out about it but it took me a while to get into this book but as soon as I did, it just kept going and going and going until the last page. Um, it is definitely a page turner. If you don't like aliens as much in multiple point of views, it might tear you away from this book. I really enjoyed it because the writing was really intense. Um, <sighs> what's her name again? I forgot her name. Uh, Cassie. So we have the main character. Cassie and she is living in this world where aliens have t taken over and she has to survive. So that's basically the premise of this story but there's also different characters that come in to play and obviously there's a romance in this one. Um, I thought it was okay the romance but yeah this one was a 5 out of 5 for me. 
<clears throat> and then I read Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. This is the author of the Silver Linings playbook and I just finished this today because I realized this was last year's release but since this is published in 2013 I had to add it to this list. It is intense, gripping, emotional I want to say and it gave me all the feels. This one I pulled so many quotes from. I just loved the way it sounded and all the quotes and all the the whole premise in this book. I just had qualms about the ending. Didn't like it as much as I thought I would but um, this is Leonard's um, I want to say his last hurrah because he is planning to um, kill someone. So it's kind of morose and disturbing in a way but once you go through his journey and you're in his mindset it is very very strange and very it's very um I want to say you're going to feel a lot of compassion for this kid. So it is really heavy. I suggest you know um reading down reading it in one go because I did and it was insane. So this is one book I want to get a finished copy of. So yeah, this is how you write contemporary fiction. Love this one. I also forgot about this one. This is Unravel Me by Tahara Muffy. I read it in 2012, which is probably why it's not on my actual survey. I loved this one, Team Warner. I just have to say, chapter 62. If you like romance, if you like it done well, and it's in a unique setting, tr use... Yeah, I just can't get enough of this at this book. Yes. This series must. Another one is All Our Yesterdays by Kristen Terrell. This is another, I, I want to say, time travel book. I thought it was dystopian and it wasn't. So um, it follows two characters and it's back and forth, multi, um, dual point of views. I thought it was gripping. I thought it was entertaining. And it was in, you know, not a unique setting, but I do like time travel. So if you like that sci-fi time travel books, then check this one out. Of course I had to add this one, Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. I just want to say this one gave me all the feels. The ending was, oh gosh, it was kind of, yeah, retching to say the least. Um, this is my uh, favorite series of Cassandra Clare's and I know she writes really long descriptive books but in this case this is her last one out of that Infernal Devices and I really, really enjoyed this one. And another book that's also histor historical fiction is Belladonna by Fiona Paul. This is her second book in her Venom trilogy, I believe, and I really enjoyed this one. I like the romance in this one, so if you're not really into romance, um, I don't think it would be for you. It's a, it was a little long and dragging, so it's more of a character development book, but I like the characters, so yeah, check this one out. And this is Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. I have to confess, <clears throat> I read this in 2012. I don't remember what happened. I just remembered it was better than Cinder. Yeah, I know my memory is gone to crap, but um, I just remember liking the main character more than I did um, Cinder. So yeah, this is time for a reread. I just know that I loved it so much. And then another book that was creepy for me because it's full of ghosts and paranormal paranormal stuff is The Diviners by Libba Bray. Um, this is a really intense book. It is huge. Yeah. Um, I want to say in a small simple sentence it is a ghost story and they have to find who the killer is. That was the whole book, but I really liked the main character. She was funny and witty, and it was set in the Roaring Twenties. So I don't like the cover change they did for this one. I really hope they just keep, you know, keep 
all in one go. But this is Champion by Marie Lu. This is the ending of her Legend trilogy. And this one had mostly all the answers that I had. They were all answered. And I thought it was a really good ending. I just thought as well that it was... I don't know why the ending happened the way it did. I just didn't know if it was necessary, but it did give me peace to their relationship of June and Day because I liked them so much. But um, yeah, liked the questions being answered in this one and I really enjoy her dystopian take. So it was, I feel how like this series is even better than Divergent. And I know, please don't kill me, but sometimes um, Divergent like bored me. I was kind of bored in Divergent. I need books that are like fast paced. So if you have ADD like me, check out this, this series because I really enjoyed it more. And then the last but not least is Sever by Lauren Stefano. This book was, oh god, um, there is a part in here that just made me cry. And yeah, not cry, but tear. So this is her last book in the Severed trilogy and we finally find out again uh, all the answers have been um, thrown in the ending which was kind of weird but the relationship in here is dedicated more to um, what's her name again? Um, Reen, Reen and her sister, her sister wife. So I thought that was a good um, take because we get to see more of, um, forgot her name, the, her sister wife's name, but I liked it. I just didn't like that scene. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about, but, um, yeah, that is it for me for my top 20 of 2013. I know there was a lot of books, but there was a lot of books that I couldn't keep out of this list. What did you guys read that was your favorite in 2013? Let me know below. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.